So one of the things that's really challenging to understand about Power Query refresh times is that they seem highly variable. And this has to do with a lot of different factors about how Power Query's evaluation engine sources up its queries to send for refresh, what's going on on the individual processor chain, are the queries being batched together and sent so that they all have to complete on one processor core, are they being sent individually? There's a lot of different things that can actually go and contribute to these. And one of the things that gets really interesting is when you start timing the same queries over multiple days and you find that the runs are on one day 20% faster than they are on another day, and that just indicates there might be something happening in the background of your computer they don't even have any control over. So trying to get an accurate refresh time is actually really challenging. Now, to help interpret some of this, we've got some features built into Monkey Tools to see what kind of effects individual components have. Now, the first one I wanna talk about is privacy. Uh, by default, all Power Queries actually check privacy compatibility settings. If you want to turn that off and you have your privacy settings set so that it's controlled on a workbook going workbook basis, you can check that box and it will ignore privacy. And you'll find that after timing them a couple times, you'll find that it actually generally runs faster. But before you turn privacy off globally, you should definitely know the effects of it. So please do some research on that first. But if you want to see the effects, you can try it here. But if we really want to see the effects, let's try this. Let's go and chart the variation over multiple runs of Power Queries. Now, I'm going to do five trials. This is my recommended minimum because there's such um, variability inside these runs. And what will happen here is we're going to chart that output for you so you can try and make some determinations around it. I am also going to check this box, which I don't usually do because this can significantly impact the runtime of queries. But for this purpose, I'm going to check the box and double the trials to compare our privacy effects. So we're going to run them five times with privacy settings turned on and five times with privacy settings turned off. Now, the important thing to know about this is that in order to work with this particular checkbox here, your Power Queries must be set to allow changing of privacy. And what that means is under your privacy settings, you need to be using the middle setting here and you can't have disabled privacy outright for a specific workbook. So as long as this is combined according to the privacy level settings for each source, and as long as you haven't changed this from the default, so you're sitting on the combine here, at this point, we'll be able to toggle it on and off when we refresh your Power Queries. So what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna run a detailed refresh of every individual query here. And what's gonna happen is that Monkey Tools is gonna to go through and it's gonna refresh each query five times, first with our privacy checks off and then with privacy checks active. And you can see that it's going through that process right now of starting to refresh these queries. Now I'm gonna go and skip this video forward a little bit. We're gonna wait until it's complete so we don't have to watch the whole thing go in real time. And then we'll take a look at what we actually get from our output. All right, and here we are at the end. We've got a beautiful little chart that's showing us a whole bunch of information. Now let's put it out in what we call a box and whisker format. If you're not familiar with this type of chart, there is a link here, which will take you to an article on my website where you can help interpret these and understand these. But the key parts that I wanna focus on right now are what's going on in this. And basically the way you wanna read this is the best performing queries are as close to zero as possible and have the smallest height of the bars because what that bar indicates is the variation in query timing. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna actually show you the ones that have the largest variation. I'm gonna hide the privacy ignored column right here. And you'll notice that this now focuses directly in on the chart for just the default state for pure power query refreshes, which is when privacy is active. You can see our buffered query here has a very, very short box here. The little X in here is the average time it took, about 1.8 seconds to refresh this, and very little variation overall because the box is quite short. Over on our UI driven here, we're 1.4 seconds, so slightly less on average, a little bit less variation. This definitely would be the query that I would prefer versus the buffered version of the PQV lookup function that I originally wrote for MS for Data Monkey. This is the unbuffered version, what was actually contained within the book. Notice that it takes on average approximately 12 seconds to run. 
and there's a little bit more variation than what we see in the UI driven or in the buffered. So this one here over multiple refreshes will take more time. UI driven over here, same query as here, but this one loads to an Excel worksheet. This one loads to the data model. Notice how it takes a little bit longer. And this again is the exact same query, but it loads to both the worksheet and the data model. And notice how much variation of time there is. We had one crazy outlier here that took about 60 seconds to refresh, where, which definitely influences the average, which is about 19 seconds. So we can see the fastest time down in this area here was about seven seconds or so. So a lot of variation in here. So this is one of the queries I wouldn't really like to rely on that, but it's interesting to see that not only can the query makeup have an effect on how fast it refreshes, but so can the load destination. Table, data model, table and data model right there. The other two, by the way, are loaded, buffered and unbuffered are loaded to tables. Now, one of the nice things about this is that you can actually filter some of these things out. So if I hold down my control key and say, let's get rid of this UI driven compound, we can focus in on just what's going on. So if I say, you know what, let's see just Ken's original examples. Using a table.buffer in the right place inside this query brings it down to be very, very quick and with very little ref uh, variance on the refresh. Whereas an unbuffered version takes a lot longer with a little bit more variance in it. If I go and take it, the look at the UI driven from table and data model, we can see that loading to a table on a worksheet is definitely faster. Not significantly. I mean, this is only, you know, what is that? An average of 2.5 seconds, not a big deal versus what do we have here? This one here is 1.4. It's not huge in the grand scheme of things, but definitely there is a notable difference. And when you bring in UI driven compound, holy cow, that thing just goes crazy, doesn't it? So let me bring all these back for a second though. And now I'm just going to unhide this column over here. And what we can see here is that things get even more crazy suspect when we start comparing things. Let's me take a look here at buffered. With privacy suppressed, this one runs in about 0.97 seconds and it runs in about that time almost every time. Look how little variation there is compared to when privacy is actually active here. If we go and take a look at the unbuffered version, we'll bring that in as well. Much less variation when we're running with privacy off than there is with privacy on. Still takes a fair amount of time though, but man, that is crazy. Like nice and low and very little variation just by toggling privacy. Let's look at our UI driven versions. UI driven with no privacy, fast and very, very stable. UI driven with privacy active, the default state, takes a lot longer. Let's compare the original buffered version versus UI driven. Look at this, all built through the user interface, no coding. This one did take a little bit of coding in the right place, super fast. And that's what's really cool about this is we can now start saying, hey, is the performance of this really good? And honestly, this workbook, the whole point of this was to test exactly this because I had built this up to try and make it as fast as possible and somebody gave me something through the user interface and I went, really? It can't possibly be faster if you build it through the UI, can it? And lo and behold, that's what happened here. And how did I figure it out? By testing it with the time sleuth. So these are some of the cool features that we have inside Monkey Tools for testing the performance of different queries. I definitely recommend that you run your query timings multiple times. Usually five is about good to get a sort of a base average here. It's not statistically significant. If you really wanna get into that world, you're gonna to have to do a lot more work, honestly. But at the end of the day, this will give you a good idea as to which query is taking the longest, if you're running it across you know, all queries in the workbook, or if you're trying to compare different versions of the same thing, which one may run faster. So there you go. I hope you find this tool interesting and useful. It is definitely one of those features that people who time queries absolutely love. Thanks for watching this episode of Using Monkey Tools. To get your own monkey, visit our website at monkeytools.ca. Or if you subscribe to Skillwave's Self-Service Business Intelligence Academy, you'll get a free annual pro license included with your subscription. And remember, Monkey Tools was developed to support better Excel and Power BI solutions. If you want to learn how to really master these tools, you should definitely check out our full course catalog at skillwave.training.